deed several years later in 1859. However, during the interval between 1853 and 1859, squatters had started staking claim to parts of the Bediesa Ranch and others. The story goes that the Bediesa brothers lost part of their ranch as a result of squatters' claims being upheld by the U.S. courts. Another story is that the Bediesa brothers lost the ranch piece by piece as a result of their gambling activities. Whether this happened or not is hard to verify. More certain is that widows or other family members sold off parcels as needed to meet expenses and pay off debts. The town of Monticello had begun to grow up around the site of the original Berriesa Adobe on the east side of Puda Creek. And legend has it that Sisto, one of the two Berriesa brothers settling in this area, had retreated to what is now called Spanish Flat on the western side of the valley. The foundation of his house supposedly remains near the present site of the Monticello Cemetery, which was moved to the flat when the valley was flooded by the building of the Monticello Dam in the 1950s. The town grew to several streets, a post office, a hardware and general store, a hotel, and the valley boasted of having the first telephone system in California. There were several schoolhouses in the valley. This is the remains of the old schoolhouse in Cherry Valley. Monticello Town became the venue for 4th of July rodeos, baseball games, and cow roasts, drawing people from miles around. There was dry land farming in the Berrieta Valley with the production of livestock and grain. There was also a canal system developed to shunt water to where it was needed. The old Monticello Cemetery told much of the history of the area and its people. In winter, the rainy season in this part of California, the drought-tolerant plant life is replenished with water. The wild black walnut still dormant with a few old nuts from the season past. The valley oak twigs and branches drip with water. A few new green leaves in evidence. The interior live oak, on the other hand, keeps most of its leaves from past years and is one of the plants maintaining a green allure even in the winter forest landscape. The mist passing over and through the ridges impart a mysterious aura to the landscape. The manzanita flowers profusely in January. The beautiful Indian warrior blossoms amongst fallen manzanita petals. Unlike the evergreens Toyon and Manzanita, Poison oak remains lifeless in appearance, the only clear color being the gray-green lichens that grow on its stem and branches. The ever-increasing non-native annual grasses of California now green up with the winter rains and soon catch up in color with the native perennials turning green, which start even before the rains begin. With the rains, the fallen leaves, once colorful, now darken and start to decay. In the early 1950s, rumors circulated the valley that a dam would be built. It turned out to be true. The residents of Monticello and the rest of the valley fought this development, but they lost. The dam was completed in 1957, and millions of acre feet of water rapidly filled in behind it. The glory hole, or the overfill, would take the excess water in heavy rainfall years. Later, a hydroelectric system was added to generate electricity. The town and the valley are now long gone, leaving the second largest human-made lake in California, Lake Berryessa, which surrounds the Quail Ridge Peninsula. The osprey now presides over this enlarged watery territory, hunting fish for its offspring, while the cooper's hawk hunts small birds amongst the forests of Quail Ridge Reserve. As the spring months of March, April, and May unfold, the winter rains diminish and then cease. The hills of Quail Ridge Reserve become greener, this being one of the few areas remaining in California where many species of native bunch grasses abound. One can see here what the state truly looked like before settlement by large numbers of non-indigenous peoples who brought with them the plow, 
massive herds of grazing animals, road building equipment, and many noxious weeds. With the activities of overgrazing, plowing, and construction, which laid bare enormous areas of native plant cover, pioneer weeds, or introduced species, spread rapidly into these inhospitable terrains. In the U.S., we lose 8,000 acres daily to weeds on federal lands alone. In California, it is estimated that 25 million acres, or about one quarter of the state, was covered with native bunch grasses, and that today only about 1%, or 100,000 acres, survive. In contrast, star thistle, only one of hundreds of introduced weeds in the state, now covers perhaps 10 to 15 million acres of California. At Quail Ridge Reserve, one can see and learn just how powerful and effective native bunch grasses can be when planted and managed properly in outcompeting non-native pioneer weeds. The perennial bunch grasses with deep roots of 6 to 15 feet are able to outcompete even the drought-tolerant pioneer weeds. But, equally importantly, these perennial grasses aid the young first and second year oaks, especially blue oak and valley oak, during the dry summer months by providing moisture for the young oaks roots until they are able to reach permanent water at deeper levels of the earth and thus fend for themselves. With the loss of most of the state's bunch grasses, many young oaks die in their first year or two of desiccation or drying out. In habitats made up of native plants, as compared with areas of non-natives, one always finds larger numbers of mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, insects, and other forms of fauna, because they all relate to the plant worlds with which they have evolved and now rely on for food, shelter, and structure of the habitat. At Quail Ridge Reserve, a balanced relationship between flora and fauna exists thus making the reserve an invaluable source for researchers interested in studying a less disturbed place in order to understand better what needs to be done to restore places that have been seriously disturbed by humans. It is important to remember that this sort of research, investigating intact models for habitat restoration, is an essential function of undisturbed reserves. In short, reserves such as Quail Ridge Reserve bring benefits beyond the obvious one of preserving plants and animals for future generations to appreciate. At the small but growing Quail Ridge House Visitor Center, one can learn about the interesting flora and fauna to be seen in the 2,000 acre reserve. Active fundraising is underway to finish purchasing the center as well as to complete the purchase of several key parcels currently held by Quail Ridge Wilderness Conservancy. The Conservancy is developing a variety of educational programs for families, clubs, and other groups, and for teachers and school children. The Center's museum houses a number of materials rarely seen elsewhere by the public on the history of the Lake Berryessa region and on the ways people impacted the lands of California. These materials come alive when coupled with stories gleaned from history. Quail Ridge Reserve is a wonder to visit any time of the year, but spring is especially wonderful with the unfolding of new leaves, flowers such as the first woodland stars, Indian paintbrush, owl clover, lupins, including the perennial bush lupin, blue-eyed grass, which is really an iris, mule ear sunflower, redbud, chemise chaparral or greasewood in bloom, which adds color to major parts of the hills. And the late blooming, small but brilliant woolly sunflower. Amongst the flowers rises one of the finest stands of native grasses in native oak habitat in the entire state of California. As with all reserves, constant vigilance and stewardship are required in order to protect these last remnants of native habitats. You may participate in the stewardship of this magnificent reserve by becoming a member of Quail Ridge Wilderness Conservancy, by volunteering to work on reserve projects, or by becoming a special benefactor of the reserve. Please contact us for more information 
at any of the following. 